There we go. That's what I was waiting for. All right. This is the in-person Breakthrough Tuesday. I, I think we should become more and more familiar with calling the fourth Tuesday the Breakthrough Tuesday because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for people to have these breakthroughs and this is all supernatural. None of it's going to happen without the Lord. So um, I'll emphasize it right here since this is being recorded. And at some point in time, somebody <coughs> might see this and understand that we have Bible studies every Tuesday, but the fourth Tuesday is earlier. All the other Tuesdays, the first, second, third, and fifth Tuesday is always at 7.30 Zoomed, Zoomed through our link. And then on the fourth Tuesday, that Tuesday is in person here at the CFA Worship Center at 7 o'clock. And it's a breakthrough Tuesday because what I'm hoping is that we get a whole lot of people in here that really need prayer for something that is not quite right in their body and maybe even some other area of their life. But breakthroughs are breakthroughs are breakthroughs, whether it's one in relationships or economically or um, in the body or something else oppressive that might be happening and people need to be delivered and have a breakthrough. So that's what the fourth Tuesday is all about. Well, it's a little challenging to do that when everybody that comes in here is pretty much healthy. <laughs> so then it turns into a little bit of a different session. So that's what I'm going to pray for. And that's what I'm going to lean into. And the day should not be that long that we're together, but uh, you never can tell. So let me just start off in a word of prayer and say, Father God, we thank you for everyone that is able to come out and we can see each other face to face. What I ask, Lord, is that in the future, that there are more and more people that we are speaking to that find out that they can, that they can come to a place on a Tuesday night and receive prayer for a breakthrough in their life, in their body, in their spirit, in their pocketbook, in their relationships, whatever it might be, that people find out that we here will come together to pray for their breakthrough. And I pray that's exactly what happens, that people have breakthroughs. But what I ask for tonight, Lord, is that as the saints are gathered here tonight, that we can go into the scriptures and maybe exercise a little bit of something, but go into the scriptures to have a, a better understanding of how to move by the spirit of wisdom and revelation, having our senses exercised to discern both good and evil and to discern when you're moving, when you're showing us something or telling us something or we're feeling something. So what I ask, Father God, is the revelation of Jesus Christ is brought to another level because of what we cover tonight, what we look into tonight and where we want to go in the future. So for that, Father God, we're going to thank you. We're going to thank you for, for all of the healings and deliverances and breakthroughs and miracles that we will see because we come together to learn how to move with you. For that, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody that agrees with that prayer can say amen. 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 Now, as you, as you all know, and some people don't know, um, this is very interactive. That's why there's microphones at the table. Because when we, when I open this up to start talking about um, what's, what's the Lord saying to you, you can't be heard without the microphone. So you're going to have to pick up the mic, make sure the mic is on, and then speak into the mic. Is that all right? All right. And to everyone that is uh, not able to come out but catching us on Zoom, uh, just unmute yourself and you can speak at that time where we go more interactive. So for now, because we're talking about this being Breakthrough Tuesday, there's this one area that I want to 
lean in on. If there were more folks here and sick folks here, I would do this a little bit differently. But because that's not the case, what I'm going to ask is everybody go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I've got it up here on the screen. So, um, so everybody can see it. And um, here's what I want to do. I want to challenge us, which isn't really going to be a great challenge, but challenge us on thinking something. All right. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now look at what the Lord says here. I'm going to read about eight scriptures. Yeah. So, so starting at verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. First point, God is the one that puts people in the church. I know people go to churches and they just figure this is a nice place, I'll go here, and then they go there for the rest of their life. So God is saying, though, I'm, if, if it's really somebody that's hungry for the Lord, they'll go to a place where they can be fed, a place where they can grow, a place where God has set them. And when he sets a person in the body, it's not an accident, it's not a fluke, it's not just a coincidence. He's doing it. And the point is, and for the people that are in a body, a healthy body, let's just say a non-toxic, dangerous body, they're in a good body where people love each other and they want to grow in God. God did that. God set you in the place that you're at. That makes sense? Okay. So he says again, now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Very important to just note that he did it the way that it pleased him. And then it says, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. A lot of people, but one body. It says, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. In other words, everybody is in the body for a reason, and we can't look down our nose at anyone because we were all lost. <laughs> and we were saved by the blood of Jesus to become this one family. And again, I know that religious Christianity does this very differently and there's a lot of stuff that we really should unlearn but i don't know if we're going to unlearn it so that we can truly understand the ways of god and flow in the ways of god and understand that we are called first of all to love him and then to love each other and then as we love him and we love each other we carry a consistent witness and represent uh, and representation of who he is, because from that point, we've got to touch lives. But if we're touching lives, and you know how it is in, in Christendom right now in 2024, you got so many different denominations, so many different people going so many different ways that the world looks at the church and says, y'all confused, y'all don't even know what y'all doing. <laughs> and, and it's not the way the Lord set it up. But if we do this the right way, what people will begin to see are men and women and children who walk in a love that is consistent, but they're not to be walked over. There are people that have responsibility and a sense of, of purpose, and that we have a love that is supernatural, that affects people, and they begin to feel that. I want to get on this thing of this feeling. They feel that, even though we're loaded with words coming out of our mouth, they'll feel that. And when we're all saying pretty much the same thing, you need to repent. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to be baptized in water so it represents your death. 
so that now when you're coming up out of the water, you can walk with Jesus in a new life. And he's going to give you his spirit and fill you with the Holy Ghost until your spirit is speaking in a new language. And then you'll have a compassion given to you for him and for people and that you'll go out and talk to people. So there's a consistency that people should be able to hear in that. It might be little tweaks and something different here and there, wherever you go around the nation or the world. But the world would begin to say, wow. All these people believe in the supernatural. All these people believe that Jesus is God, that he is Lord. All these people believe that the Bible really is the word of God. They all believe that there's a heaven. They all believe that there's a hell. They all believe that they need to love us, and they show love to each other. They don't seem so confused. <laughs> that's what they need to see, and that's what Jesus prayed for. So we have to have confidence in our identity in Christ that if the rest of the world even the church world still wants to act hateful envious filled with hypocrisy living for itself selfishly we can't be about that what we have to do is be about what the Lord has said we are to be about and that is a representation of sons of God who are men and women that speak like Jesus did and think like Jesus did and love like Jesus did, yet we're brilliant in all of our professions. <laughs> we're brilliant in everything that we do. We're great in our lines of, of work and we're, we're, people just can't bring a really accusation against us because we're people that are smart but love God and the world has to say, they're not stupid either, <laughs> okay? Does that make sense? So this is what the body is to be about, and we have to have confidence that we are part of this body. And there's a lot that I want to say about one thing, but I don't want to spend the time on it right now. But that means that the body is composed of people that understand being born again. We've got to have confidence in our identity that we are born again. When we went through the processes of water baptism and spirit baptism, we were being born again when the blood of Jesus covered us and forgave us of all of our transgressions and we were justified and sanctified. We're born again by the incorruptible word of God. So we've got to be that. We've got to have confidence. That is what happened. Because when that happened, it was a supernatural event that happened in each one of our lives. Every Christian needs to have some kind of supernatural encounter with God. Every single one of us. All of us. Amen? So, when that happens, and we can say, you know, I remember how the Lord saved me. I, can, I remember something happened. That's, that's the beginning of the encounter. It's a real thing. And we got to have confidence that at the very, very least, we were born again. At the very, very least, the blood really did cleanse us. At the very least, that we were filled with God. So we've got to have a strong identity in that. So let me, before I go any further, any feedback on that? Any thoughts? Any observations? Um, yeah, there's the mics right there. Or anybody that's on the Zoom, any thoughts? Every part is needful. Every part. Oh, we didn't hear that. That's, we didn't hear that at all. Every part <laughs> is made for a purpose. We are fitly drawn together. But we have to understand and learn how to work together because we are one body. Amen. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Oh, is push the button. Um, it's not only the body working together. It's taking responsibility and taking action with what you are given. Yes. Uh, because sometimes, you know, yeah, not everybody's called to preach. Not everybody's called to heal. But everybody's called for a purpose. Every yeah. single one of us are called to be 
messengers and sharers of the word of God. That's for sure. Every single one of us, but not all of us have the same purpose in the body, but we have a very important purpose because every blood vessel, every nerve ending, everything in our bodies has a purpose. And yep. it's hard to live without. Uh, and people should take, uh, um, and I won't say pride because the word pride shouldn't exist in our vocabulary, but we should take pride. You yeah. know something? If I was sent here to be a sweeper of the church, so be it. If I'm going to be here to go pick up people in the van or the bus or whatever it is, so be it. Amen. You know, whatever that we, we are, we are put here for a purpose and we have to continually ask God, what is my purpose? And try, once you know that purpose, is pursue that purpose with all you've got. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts before I go further? Even with the perfect example of that, because he was called to clean the table in the church. Yeah, exactly. He, was, he wasn't called to a house or what the office that he filled in. He did his best, and he was at his best, and in fact, he gave his life for the church. Yeah, he was one of the very first deacons. Yes. Responsibility of taking care of the the uh, people that needed to be ministered to, waiting on tables, serving tables. So it all began with service for the deacons. And then, as Jesse said, here's a man that started out doing that. And the next thing you know, you're reading about him in Acts chapter 7, doing signs, wonders, and miracles that made the Pharisees upset and nervous when they saw the kind of power that he was walking in, but that's that's where it starts. So uh, very, very good, very good. So I just want us to know that God is the one that has set us in the body. He's done it as it's pleased him. Every person is valuable. Every person has um, a function and every person is used by God. There are no unused people in the body with the exception of people that refuse to be used. Then they're not used. When they refuse, then they're not used. But if they will yield, they will be used by God and they'll be glad that he used them. Trust me on that. So, uh, so here it is, I'm gonna continue reading here. Picking up again at verse 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem more feeble are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our comely parts have more abundant comeliness for our comely parts have no need but god again here's what it's god that did this but god hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Now, so there's this importance of seeing how every single person is valuable. Now let's get into some, uh, a little more meaty stuff here. <laughs> here we go. It's interesting that the next verse says, verse 26, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member should be honored, all the members rejoice with it. And in verse 27, now are ye the body of Christ and members in particular. And I'm going to hold it right there. So it says, one member suffer, all members suffer with it. One member be honored. All members rejoice with it. Okay, so that sounds good because it sounds like, um, is everybody familiar with the word empathy? You know, empathy is not sympathy. Enthropy or en enthropy or en 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 if I say it enough, I'm going to get a tongue tie. But, but, but some people 
can be called empaths because they have empathy and they have to a great degree because empathy means I feel what you're going through. I, I feel your pain. Now we'll say that and we'll say that kind of like, you know, um, kind of like it's, uh, oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Symbolically, we, we kind of feel it. We don't, in our, in our physical person, we might not actually feel pain, but we are so in tune with the person that our imaginations tell us, this is what this must feel like. I've seen this person. And so we're, we're kind of relating. We're relating to their grief. We're, we're relating to whatever it is that they're going through. So enthropy is this capacity to feel what people are feeling, okay? So there's this term called empathetic capacity. So I would say that a hard-nosed, mean person has a very low empathetic capacity because all they can think about is themselves and they're all about themselves. But a person with empathetic capacity means that they have the capacity to not just feel what they're feeling, but they feel what this other person is feeling. Okay, you with me? So when the scripture says one suffers, all suffer. One rejoice, all rejoice. What we may not have appreciated is how deep that scripture is really, um, really calling us to. And it's more than just psychological enthropy. Empathy. I don't say enthropy. Enthropy is something else. <laughs> empathy. So it's more than psychologically empathizing with somebody. It's more of you really do feel. So the, one of the words that we can use biblically is the word compassion. So the Good. compassion is I am feeling, the, I have this thing where I am feeling for this individual and I'm connecting with this individual. There's this compassion. I have a, a, a passion, but it's a compassion because I'm working with this person to feel what they're feeling. So there's, so there's empathy and then there's compassion. And then there's this verse. So I leaned on, first of all, we've got to identify in Jesus who we are and in, in identifying with Jesus who we are, we identify <laughs> with each other. We are connected, we are family. We are set into the body on purpose by God. And he's done it as it has pleased him and he has done it and tempered us together. And when he's done it, there's something that happens that can begin to happen where we're not just cold towards each other, we're warming up towards each other, amen? And what God is looking for even more than that is it moves beyond just warming up, moving beyond just the empathy. There is, a, there is this thing that causes us to really feel each other. And that is by the Holy Ghost. And that is a part of the compassion of God that has to work in each one of us or we will maintain our distance and our coolness and our safety. <laughs> Are y'all feeling what I'm saying? So it's something that starts in the body, this, this supernatural empathy. The supernatural empathy is something that starts in the body. That's why when you get to the, well, we came off, let me see, this is chapter 12. In chapter 11, when Paul is talking to them about communion, and he says, yeah, some of you are sick, and some of you are dying, and you're weak, because you have not discerned the body. Remember that? You have not properly discerned the body. You are not connecting the way that God wants you to connect. This is a very real thing, okay? So I'm bringing this out because 
I don't think people have really put these two things together, but this empathy and this compassion, it's a key to moving in these supernatural manifestations of God, the gifts of God. I'll give you one that uh, maybe everybody has heard, can be done. You may have even experienced it, but all right. So let's just say this. Sometimes when we're looking at people that need to be healed or looking for people that may be having something going on in their body and we don't know what it is. And so we're saying, Lord, give me a word of knowledge. Yes. Okay. Give me a word of knowledge so that I can know what's going on in someone. Sometimes God will give such an accurate word of knowledge that you not only know what's going on in the person, you know their name. <laughs> and you might even know how long they've been dealing with the thing because he's opening up a word of knowledge so that this, the thing that has not been told to anyone from this individual is now being told to you because you're asking God, help me to see what's going on in people and he gives you something. But even at times, there may be a sensation that happens in an individual where they say, oh, I got a, I got a pain right here in my, in my deltoid. Uh, is there anybody that's got a pain in their deltoid? And somebody says, yeah, I do. It's a word of knowledge. It's a word of knowledge that is actually touching your body. And so you're feeling what they're feeling, okay? Or somebody, all of a sudden, just real simple, you're fine, you're healthy, everything's great, and then all of a sudden, you just have a very itchy throat, just out of nowhere. But let's just say you're in the mode of ministry, and then it comes, and then you can say to yourself, wow, I must be coming down with something, or oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe God's trying to tell me something that somebody else is feeling this itchiness in their throat. And then you ask, is there somebody that's got some kind of itchy thing in their throat? And then they say, yeah. Or it could be something you feel in your stomach and if somebody got an issue with their stomach or you feel something in your leg and somebody's got an issue in their leg, you are actually feeling what they are feeling. The empathy has gone beyond just being you know, um, symbolic, you know, I'm symbolically empathizing because I can see what you're going. Now you're actually feeling it, okay? And there are things that may be going on in an individual and all of a sudden you just have a deep feeling of depression. Boom, it just came on you out of nowhere. And you're saying, I'm not depressed, huh? Wait a minute. Is there somebody that's dealing with some depression? And yes, they are. Or you feel anxiety. You're feeling it. You're feeling anxious and anxiety, and it's just out of nowhere. And you say to yourself, is there somebody that is feeling anxious and anxiety and about to stress out or worry? Yeah, that's me. You have a word of knowledge, and you're actually feeling what the person is feeling. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. This, yes. Is, this is the level that God is looking for, for his church to be so in sync with him that you're picking up on what's going on with your brothers and sisters. And that's why the scripture says, if one rejoice, all rejoice, because all of a sudden, you have a sense of jubilation, and you're saying, whoa, what's going on? Something good's going on. Ooh, somebody get some good news. <laughs> and, and boom, you're there. Enjoy. Or someone has this deep uh, sadness that comes on. Oh, what's going on? Is something, you're sad? I'm telling you, these are areas where God wants the body to be able to be in sync with itself, with people being in sync with each other. And the words of knowledge that we can receive, you know, initially when we looked at the gifts of the Spirit, 
A long time ago, when we first were exposed to all these things, we thought they were really fun. I mean, they're fun. They're fun. I mean, I admit that. But they're also, these are, when God gives these things to us, he wants us to understand why we're getting these things. The, the depth of, of how these gifts can help the body. Because none of the gifts are given just so that you can exploit it on yourself. That doesn't mean you can't pray for yourself or anything like that. You need to do that. You do need to exercise on yourself. But you also need to understand that these gifts are given and you're experiencing the impartation of a gift so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. And the more that you will yield yourself to the love of God and allow that compassion to be real, you begin to sense things in people where they might have been tight-lipped and they really need the help and they won't say anything and then God gives it to you and you walk up to them and say, are you going through something? You follow what I'm saying? All right, now, uh, yes. anybody want to say something right now? <laughs> Eddie here. Can you hear me? Yes, Eddie. Eddie from New York. <laughs> Eddie from New Jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah, New Jersey, rather, yeah. I'm a Jerseyan. Okay, <laughs> and Reverend Lou and do what you were talking about. There's some things that were coming across my mind. Okay, at Isaiah 50 and 4, I'm going to throw this in here. Uh, anyway, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned oh. that I should know how to speak a word and receive it to him that is weary. Okay, back here a number of years ago, when I was a part of another congregation going back, and I was in my bedroom preparing to iron a shirt or pants or whatever, and one of the brothers uh, uh, came across me very heavily. And the, uh, I was speaking his name, and then the thoughts from darkness came uh, over me and said, oh, he doesn't want to be bothered with you. I said, oh, yeah? I said, you stand there and listen. I picked up the phone and called. There was John DePace. John DePace was a part of the music uh, of the uh, praise group. And I called him. He answered the phone. He was working in the Eminem Mars right around the corner from me. He said, Eddie, you called just in time. I was going through some heavy stuff. Heavy stuff. Hey, Eddie, speak up a little more and speak clearly because your voice is coming through a okay, little it, Okay, I, I, it's I don't want to miss what you're saying. Okay, now, uh, let me start from the beginning. Let me put this on. This is the technician of somebody who work on this phone again. In Isaiah 50 and 4, is it Isaiah the, Lord, the uh, scripture says, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word and season to him that is weary. Okay, back to several years ago, I was in the house preparing to earn a shirt or a pair of pants. One of the brothers who was a part of the praise group came across me very heavily. Very heavily. And, uh, the thought of darkness came to me in saying that he doesn't want to be bothered with you. So I rebuked those thoughts. And I picked uh -huh. up the phone to call the brother who works right around the corner in Eminem Mars for me. And he answered the phone from Mrs. Eskin in his office. He said, Eddie, thank you for calling. You called just in time. So I'm going through some heavy, weary, some very heavy stuff right now. So uh, we prayed over the phone. Of course, we saw each other after that. This is in lieu of what you are talking about, being connected via the spirit and uh, one body. When one limb hurts, the other one hurts. When someone yeah. gets sick, the other part of the body is not functioning right. You're giving a connection here. How we need to be attended to or someone is getting a word to come to that, or be sent to that person for encouragement and so forth and so on. <clears throat> okay. Okay. It took a little work to hear that, <laughs> but I think I got the, I think I got the uh, essence of what you were saying there. Uh, anyone else want to chime in on, on what we said or amplify on what uh, Eddie was saying?
chance. I was looking for the scripture, by the way. 50, verse 4. <clears throat> yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Sylvia. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So anyway, I, didn't have, I was muted. So anyway, I like to amplify on what all the brothers said. Um, so this week, um, a, 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 few week, a few weeks before uh, this week, I've been thinking about a co-worker of mine who's a Christian, Holy Ghost field. So I'm, I'm like, well, I guess I need to pray for him. So I started praying for him. And one of the main things I prayed for him was that the Lord would allow him to stay in his house as long, in his apartment as long as he wanted to. So I prayed that prayer. So this week, uh, the brother called me. And he said, Sylvia, I've been thinking about you, you know, just talking about uh, the work and the job and the friendship we had. And so I said, well, I've been, I've been praying for you that the Lord will uh, let you stay in your apartment as long as you want to. And he just started praising God. He said, that's from the Lord. He said, because I've been having, you know, battling here with this, uh, my apartment. And he said, they... I put a notice up, but somebody somehow gave him the money to continue to stay there. So I I don't know what I'm sure is helpful, but that happened to me this week. Oh, this week. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Anyone else? Actually, everybody's just fighting to get to the mic. <laughs> to say that probably may seem like a simple thing, but I see this happens more uh, quite a bit with the loving married couple mm. in the Lord. They feel for each other, have compassion for each other. Even one may ache, the other ache without the other even telling them what they did. Mm. One just did, the other already knew it because of the Amen. 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 Yes. All right. When we were originally we were talking about, you know, with Stephen doing, you know, wiping tables and serving people and all of that. It made me think of how, you know, a lot of people come into a company and they really want to make it to the top start like in the custodial or in the mail room a lot of times or in the copy printer or something like that in the lower positions but then when you think about it you're learning it from the ground up whereas some people come in and they're at higher levels I'm looking at even in our own organization where managers come in and they have even so much more to learn about the company than I did because I was in customer service. Mm -hmm. In customer service, you're exposed to every angle of the company yeah. because of the questions that people you know, ask. So it's like in, in the body of Christ, we are learning every part of this so that we can be ready to be used. Amen. Amen. of God and no matter there's no position and no part really that's minor mm. because he even said that every single part that makes a part of the body is important and if you don't think so stub your baby toe your whole body hurts yes <laughs> get a paper cut yes. on your finger yes I mean a paper cut oh my god Gosh, that thing hurts. Yeah, it's you quite know? miserable. <laughs> right. Or get something in your eye. I mean, we think about any part of our body that something happens that should be a reminder of the body of Christ when something happens. Yes. It affects the entire body. And that's even when, when someone who's been with us and been fellowshipping with us and all of a sudden is we don't see them anymore. Yeah. That's hurting the body. Yes. 
that's affecting the body. Yes. Because that person is not there. They don't think that they're important. The toe doesn't know that it's that important. Yeah. But we do as the body. Amen. And so we should be going after those people. I guess there's a whole bunch of things in what I'm saying. We should be going after those people. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That have pulled away. Yeah. Because they think they're not important. But every little part is important. I'm going to say something super controversial. But when a person starts feeling that way, they start feeling like I'm not important and, you know, no one really cares for me. Who's saying that? That's the adversary. That's the devil. Right. <laughs> That's the devil. And what's he doing? He's pushing them out by themselves. Yes. And so we should be like, if you watch Animal Kingdom or, oh boy, I really went way back, or any of these other mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. with animals, there's certain animals or, or that they go back after, what is it, the water buffalo or whatever it is, goes, oh no, no, they will fight the lions. Yeah. No, you're not going to take our family. Right. They right. group around. And that's how we should be as yes. well. Yeah. Because, yes, because we already know that's the adversary that's pulling them away. Yes, yeah. Because of the lie that, it, that he's telling them and the fear that he makes them think that they have. Yeah. Okay, very good. So now, having said these things, I want to come back to the very beginning what did we say we wanted to call these Tuesdays? Or at least I want to call them. Breakthrough. breakthrough. We want to see breakthrough. And in order for us to see breakthrough, we have to minister to people so that they can have a breakthrough. Okay? So I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that we want to have breakthrough. But for right now, just... Just as a point of exercise, I told you it wasn't going to be long tonight. I mean, if we had some people here, more people that were sick, infirmed, blind, deaf, I don't care what they are, we would be praying for them. But tonight, what I'm going to ask, we've done this exercise before, but why don't we just take a few minutes, and everybody that's Zoomed can do this too, but why don't we appropriate... Um, I'm going to go, I want to go here to uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6. 2 Timothy 1, 6 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift, stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So it says, stir it up. One of, the, one of the things that we understand is that when we pray in tongues, we're stirring things up. If we, if we want to be motivated by love and compassion, some things may begin to come forward. So what I'm going to ask is that we take a few minutes to just pray in tongues and ask the Lord, is there a word that I can receive to help encourage everyone? And so it's like if you feel something, then you can say that. If the Lord shows you something, you can see that. But the key thing about prophecy, because that's what I'm saying, you can speak prophetically you can speak to build speak to encourage speak to edify speak to exhort but let's first stir ourselves up exercise because that's what this is supposed to be about tonight so since you don't have a whole lot of people that are in here in wheelchairs and things like that uh we'll just stir ourselves up and see what the lord can say through us to each other to help build each other up and then we'll call it a night but man as we go into the spring and the summer let's get let's get 
um, I, I said, at the, at the, by the end of this year, I pray that everybody can say that they have ministered to at least one person has seen them come into the Lord and that you at least have one testimony. <laughs> one testimony, one person coming to the Lord, but you got to work on that throughout the year. Amen? And Amen. tonight, I just want to exercise. So let's just take a few minutes, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, and if the Lord gives you something after a couple of minutes, then say, this is what I believe the Lord is saying. And you don't have to do a thus saith the Lord, okay? Because I'm going to judge you a little more harshly <laughs> when you say that. But, uh, but let's just see what the Lord will say. Is that okay? Can we do that? Yes. Let's, let's believe we can get some folks in here. All right. So let's just take a few minutes and just pray in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. I exhortation, edification, and comfort because the scriptures say so. We thank you for the words that we receive now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, I'm going to start by saying that I feel the Lord was showing me that as you go forward, you're going to have people that are saying, when you, when you will walk with God to pray for people by laying hands on them, do not be surprised when people say, I feel fire coming out of your hands. I feel the Lord is saying that there is fire to come out of your hands to touch people. And don't be surprised by that. Things that need to be burned out of people that have held them bondage for a long time, you're going to see it broken by the fire of God. He says he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire hmm. is there. Okay, that's what I'll say to begin with. Now, it's just short, but there you go. <laughs> As you were talking earlier, Pastor, uh, God was just showing me something also that uh, we need to remember who we really are and what image are we made of every single human being in this world that's walking around this right now has the spirit of God still in them because God breathed that spirit in them when we were first created. He made us in his image and his image being a spirit, that spirit is still alive in every single human being. Sometimes we concentrate so much on the body and look at people in the physical and we don't even realize that we're not looking in the spiritual. Um, there was an old proverb when I was a kid. I used to remember grandpa and everybody tell us about the two wolves that were fighting inside of each one of us. 
a wolf of love, anger, and everything else. And you know, who would win? The one you feed the most. And, and that's one thing that we need to do is feed that spirit inside of each of each one of us. That spirit will actually be in contact with the spirit of another person. And you can feel that empathy. You can feel a lot more stronger. Um, I don't know. You, you, you will have more of a sympathetic love with that person. When you are trying to communicate with the spirit of that person, not just in the physical. When you really love them, love them in the spirit of God. Amen. And it will start to reveal things to you because that spirit of God, despite that person might not realize that the spirit that they have in them belongs to God because they've never tried to feed it with the word of God or with prayer or anything. But that spirit of God is still in each, every single person. And, and, and the more, if we try ourselves to contact it, it will eventually manifest itself. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right. Amen. Next. Is that it? <laughs> okay. I believe the Lord uh, was uh, telling me that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Guard your mind your mouth, and your heart. Amen. Amen. Great. Mac, you need a mic. Yeah, there's a brother, this is Brother Howard, that contacted me on Saturday. A uh, brother that I frequently pray with. Uh, as we were uh, conversing, he told me that he was diagnosed, diagnosed with prostate cancer. So, and I, I, did, I didn't think about it today until you said start praying in the spirit. But this brother goes back to UDC, first of Bryant Street. So I just want to bring it. If I don't believe it is a word of wisdom or word of knowledge. It's just that the, the Holy Ghost has brought it to my remembrance and to pray for him uh, for prostate cancer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's on. Oh, it's on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, praise my wife. Her, her, her right leg has been troubling her. And uh, she stopped. She may be on Zoom now. But, so I want to pray for that. And uh, also my daughter's, uh, I don't know what foot it is. She may have like a bone structure or something. So uh, she's been troubling her. I don't know which left or right. But one thing I was going to say is something Adrienne has said. She was talking about the body of Christ. Like if you hit your toe, you know, and that type of thing, it affects your whole body, you know. And one thing mm -hmm. I thought about, Scripture says, uh, <clears throat> with love, desire, spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought about, about I want to say about three weeks ago, four weeks, I wound up going with somebody to the emergency <clears throat> okay, uh, room. And... Um, it was packed, a whole lot of people, you know, and it takes mm. a long time. And I was, when, when I, what I thought about was that, um, like this setting right here, you know, um, I've gone places because I wanted to go. You know, I wanted to be there. I asked the Lord, use me in this particular place or whatever, you know, and, and so it took, even though uh, I could have went uh, and looked at some cartoons or something, I desire to be there. Perhaps God could use me. And that's so important. You're talking about empathy. You know, I don't know if somebody going to come in here that need a new leg, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know that each and, each and every one of us is a work in progress. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, thank God for those that may need some physical healing. But it's that inward healing also and deliverance mm -hmm. that the body of Christ needs. And so part of my prayer intercession is that we get stirred up on the inside in our time with God, that places like this be packed out greater than that emergency room. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 All right. Anyone else?
Okay. Um, in the name of Jesus, Brenda's leg, stop pain now. Pain, go now. And Cindy, right? In Cindy's foot, the spur, I command the spur to dissolve. Yes, and Jesus. We, we command the spur to dissolve. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. All right. Let's look forward to the praise report. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, I did say it was going to be a shorter session tonight. So uh, what we need to do is let's pray. Let's pray. So like Max said, I'd love to see this room filled with people that are saying, could you pray for me for this? Could you pray for me for that? Mm -hmm. People, you know, things that they're dealing with physically, things they're dealing with emotionally, things they're dealing with relationally things they're dealing with financially. Breakthrough <laughs> means breakthrough means breakthrough. Amen? Yeah. All right. All right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Extend your hands towards Mac. Lord, you have anointed this man Hallelujah. to be a voice in many, many spaces. Yes, yes Lord. As an evangelist is one that is carrying the good news of the victory of Jesus Christ, of the yes, power Lord. of God, yes. and of the love of God that thrusts him into many different places so we say father god that the power of your love is greater than Amen. anything that would hold him back yes. any yes. excuses any reasons yes. any yes. hindrances yes. whatever the devil has thrown in front of him to yes. be an obstacle yes. we say in jesus name that goes now yes and jesus. that this man walks and carries with him yes. The power of God, the word of God, that his yes, feet Jesus. are shed with the with the preparation of the gospel of peace, yes, that yes, he can Lord. move forward yes. and bring the word of God with no more obstacles or distractions yes, keeping Lord. him yes, from what Jesus. you're showing him to do. Yes, we thank you, Lord. That is going to be his testimony now yes, Jesus. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the Lord. Amen. All right. Pastor, I'd like to say something. Yes. And that is, when we look at Jesus in the book of John, the 14th and 15th chapter, Jesus speaks about how I only do the things that my father do. Yes. I only say the things that my father said. And if we were to take those things and connect them to ourselves, we could ask ourselves, how much foolishness do I do that Jesus won't do? Mm. What things do I say that Jesus won't say? Yeah, amen. We need to be more like Jesus. We do. <laughs> Absolutely. We do. And not please into one another. Yeah. Let, let the word direct our path. Amen. 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 Uh, I had something I wanted to say. Um, this is uh, oh, Tommy. this is Tommy. Yeah, yeah. I, you, <clears throat> I um, I I have I, I've enjoyed the sessions that I've heard, but I but tonight I feel overcome for um, my wife. Mary, because she's going back to to see a doctor mm. about her eyes. She had a um, she she had a situation where um, she had uh, had the cataracts removed, mm -hmm. 
And because of that, she's had some situations that are, have not been as favorable. But yet, we're just praying in a way for her to have um, her, her, her cataract surgery to, to uh, have good results. Yeah. Amen. And uh, so anyway, um, my situation about being um, legally blind is, 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 is also always on the back of my mind. But, uh, but I've always <clears throat> stayed strong in the Lord and, uh, and look for a brighter day vision-wise. And, uh, but, to, but, but tomorrow she's going to see the doctor and uh, we, we're hoping that that will, uh, that, that he will have a good report for her. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, she, she, you know, it's just like anything else. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I just want a little blessing. <laughs> I don't, I know it may not be such thing, but that's the way we kind of mentally internalize things. Yeah. You know, we just, yeah. you know, say, can I have just a little prayer, a little breath, a little, a little blessing. Hmm. But um, but the idea is is that she had the situation, and I still yes, I still go yes, uh, in the in the uh, yes, idea about it. She had to have a needle placed into her eye, hmm. and when I had that, when she told me about that, I have I've not even really gone to the doctor with her. I don't know if she wanted me to or not. But uh, Maybe. just the thought of somebody yeah. having that kind of procedure is uh, is is very difficult for me to understand. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we just so just asking for her. And uh, okay, I think I follow Tommy. So this is what we're going to do uh, before we close out. I'm going to ask everybody to focus their attention on your request for her and you didn't make a request for yourself, but we're going to do something for you too. So let's uh, uh, just as an act of faith, let's just take our hands pointed towards our computers, this computer screen here. And um, I say, Father God, we collectively as your body here in, in this family of faith, we hear the request of our brother Tommy for his wife, Mary, but we also understand that he is looking for a brighter day. These are his words. So these are the words, Lord, that we're gonna use right now. We're gonna say that we believe that according to the words that Jesus gave us, that if we speak to this mountain and command the mountain to be removed, we command the cataracts to be removed. We command all of the obstacles of vision in both Mary and Tommy to be removed. We make the command and we believe in our heart that these words that we say shall come to pass and that these things shall be removed. The scripture says we shall have what we have said. And the scriptures tell us to go on and believe that all things that we desire in prayer, believing we Thank shall you. receive. So Thank we you. believe this according to your will, because we believe it is yes. Your will is yes. You want the cataracts gone. Yes. You want the obstacles taken out of Tommy's sight so that he can see better. And yes, that there's a restoration of health that's given to them. So we declare this thing. We declare this thing. We declare this thing that you'll be glorified in Jesus' name. In Jesus', Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah.
Alleluia. Uh, this just came to me. <clears throat> it could be for Tommy, it could be for Mary, it could be for anyone. Just because a doctor says that you have a condition or that something is going on in your body mm -hmm. or this can, will happen, this is what happens. Uh, case in point, when I became menopause, I heard all oh, your, your skin's going to wrinkle, your skin's going to lose elasticity, this is going to happen, that's going to happen, all this stuff is going to happen. And I said, well, Lord, nothing will happen unless you allow it. You Amen. said that by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. Yeah. And I'm not going to receive the report of what the doctors say. Mm -hmm. I hear what they're saying, and I want to use wisdom so that I don't make things worse. Yes. But I believe that I am what you say I am. Amen. And so I think that's what it, what it is. Um, God, I don't know how to say this. So, I mean, they say with, you know, with legally blind, okay, you cannot no longer see. You know, you, you can't drive, you can't do certain things. But what is really legally blind? You know, it's what some man has said and said, okay, this is where mm -hmm. you should be seeing at this level. Well, by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. Amen. So every day, thank God for your sight. Thank mm -hmm. God for perfect vision. Mm -hmm. Thank him. Thank Amen. him for no pain in your body. Thank him for no sickness in your body. Thank him that you are, you have the manifested healing. We don't have to ask for healing because we are healed. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is waiting for the manifestation. And I know yeah. I say this all the time, and I'm, I really want people to get this. We are healed we were healed and we are healed so thank him thank him every day all day lord i praise you i don't even care if the doctor says well you know what it looks like it's getting worse oh hallelujah glory to god thank you father because i know you're going to do the miraculous in here Amen. sometimes these answered prayers don't come in exactly the way that we're praying for them Mm -hmm. He can give us insight instead of the outsight. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. 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 And in his time. Yeah. At our time. Amen. Amen. All right, folks. share this and I'm going to be in trouble but my mother gave me something that goes right along with what Adrian said when she was here in June mm -hmm. and she said healing is progressive miracles come many times to speed up the progression he sent his word and it is in all Psalm 107 20 healing always comes however manifestation is the visual part of healing the word, in capital letters, the word is the element that combats sickness, disease, infirmity, Amen. and or affliction. Our Amen. attitude toward and faith in the word are like catalysts that release the combative agents and begin the manifestation process. And I wrote that down myself because the Lord said this is important you're going to need to say or repeat or fuel your own spirit with this yes. and, and, and I just thank the Lord and the Holy Spirit and the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit for me trying to be obedient and I thank you and that's a confirmation to me that healing always thank you Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. Is it any wonder why we need to be around people of God when we're going through things? Because the world is going to make you think one way, and the people that know God are going to say something the other way. They're going to speak the word, and the more that you can get it, the better off you are. Amen. Amen. Amen.
One of the things the scripture says, uh, Jesus Christ is saying today, uh, yesterday, forever. And one of the things I thought about was the woman uh, with the issue of uh, uh, with the issue of blood. She said, "I can just if I can just touch the hem of his garment, yes. you know, you just need to to believe that yes. I can just touch him today. Yes. Today is the day of salvation. Today yes. is the day of my healing. Today, if you believe that and trust him, he's the same as he was with the woman with the issue." Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to say this, and then I guess we're going to depart. <laughs> he is in us. He is not out in space somewhere. He is in us. Every he, here's, the, here's the last thought about empathy. He feels what we feel. How about that? Tommy, Mary, he feels what you feel. That's how deep the empathy of, of God is. He feels everything. You wouldn't think so, but he does. So think about that. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. And uh, Who would like to close this out on a word of prayer? Who would like to take the mic and... and uh, Everybody moves so fast. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. We praise you, Father. All glory and honor to you, Father God. There is no one, absolutely no one, nothing like you. We thank you for your written word that you open up your, your um, revelation. Yes. You open up yourself to us. Yes. You don't give it to us all at one time because we couldn't take it. Just like you told Moses, hey, I'm just going to let you see my hind part because you couldn't take seeing all of this yes. glory. Yes. But we thank you, Lord God, that you reveal yourself to us through your word, through the words of, of our pastor and through the words of each other yes. as you yes. give them to us. Oh, Lord yes. God, may we continue to stay steadfast in the promises and the commandments and the words that you have said, spoken over us, called us, say we are, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord God, get, the, get us all home safely yes, yes, to our yes. destinations. Yes. And thank we you, thank Lord. you for this property that you've thank given unto us. Thank you, we Father. thank you for keeping your angels encamped around about it, that no thank harm you, comes to it, Lord. Lord. No harm comes to our homes, our yes, vehicles, yes, our families. Yes. We thank Lord. you and we praise you, Lord God, because you are a keeper, you are a healer, you are a deliverer. You are our Savior. You are our salvation. We thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. God bless.